What's going on there guys? Good afternoon. It's the Earth Master here on this beautiful Saturday, August 20th, 2022 date. It's about uh, 3.31 p.m., 107 degrees here in Northern California. The latest quake shows a 1.2 earthquake up into the area of Alaska. Uh, we have seen a little bit of movement out here along this area of the Middle America Trench down into South America where we're seeing a pretty good swarm of activity there around the Chile area, including some deeper movement earthquakes as well into the Peru-Chile Trench, and also a return of deep movement here around the Fiji Islands area. Let's go ahead and check out the latest data here from the USGS here showing that trail or that train of movement across the region here, all across Papua New Guinea into the Indonesia area. Uh, here's some of that deeper movement around the Fiji Islands area. We've seen a 4.7 at 509 kilometers. That uh, kicking up uh, just a short time ago, there is some smaller quakes within this region here that the USGS is not showing on the map, but definitely on the Earthquake 3D globe there from the EMSC model. So uh, definitely seen a uh, little trail of activity ramping up here along this area of the Pacific Plate. Also north of the uh, Philippines, right around Taiwan, seen a couple of fours overnight and the most recent a 4.3 earlier this morning time frame. Uh, I know we did get some activity up here into the Kurokam Chaka Trench, but uh, man, USGS not showing that. So let's switch over here to the EMSC model. We'll double check that here. Uh, USGS getting a little on the slacky side far as their reporting goes. Um, maybe it was a little bit smaller. Let me see. Let me bring up this map here. I think it was a three something into the Kurokam Chaka Trench up here. 3.9. That one kicking up here just a couple hours ago. Uh, aside from that, looks like things are kind of clear within that region of the Kurokam Chaka Trench. Uh, most of the activity here on the USGS map stops there at about the Taiwan region. And looking at the map here, there's a few more threes in the mix here around Taiwan, southward into the Philippines. And uh, things just kind of ramping up there throughout the day today. Uh, looking further west, not a whole lot to report throughout the Mediterranean, the Middle East, uh, the uh, African region, Atlantic Ocean. Not a whole lot being reported there on the USGS map. Uh, let's go over here just a little bit, take a look at the EMSC model. There's some of that smaller movement quake activity around the Java Trench and uh, some twos and whatnot all throughout the Mediterranean region here. Again, this, this area is almost always active. Um, the USGS only showing for the most part 4.0 and above. Occasionally on a strange day, they'll throw up like a 2.9 in uh, uh, Italy or, or somewhere around the Mediterranean region. Um, I've, I've even seen them throw up a 2.9 that uh, occurred down in the uh, Santiago, Chile region. So it's just weird how they pop up these little uh, earthquakes on occasion. But most of the time, 4.0 and above. Okay, all magnitude map here for the Puerto Rico region. Looks like it has picked up slightly overnight. Uh, if you recall, there was only about two earthquakes here in the Puerto Rico area last night when we did the update. Today, filling in a little bit, no drastic measurements though, or no drastic earthquakes, I should say, in that region. A 4.5 off the coast of Venezuela, 129 kilometer deep earthquake here. Uh, just outside the port of Spain, this Caribbean plate here might be showing a little bit of uh, movement. Uh, actually, it has been, but it looks like it may be pointing towards something a little bit on the bigger side than what we're seeing with all the activity in and around the area, uh, including the deeper movement earthquake activity here along the Middle America Trench. Uh, seen a 4.1 at 66.5 kilometers. So watch this area pretty closely here. This is a pretty um, complex plate boundary, vault systems out here. And uh, they get squeezed a lot. This whole area gets kind of squeezed a lot between the two bigger plates and the adjacent Cocos plate here. So we'll watch that closely. Western coast, United States, uh, for the most part, Northern California, except for the uh, Calpine operations out there and the, uh, well, the uh, energy creating earthquakes out there, Clear Lake Volcanic Field. Uh, aside from that, most of the activity, very small and microquake in that matter. Uh, we did see a 2.7 in that mix there of the Calpine earthquakes, but uh, aside from that, 
all the activity you see here on the map is all microquakes and we're not seeing anything spectacular blasting off here today uh, if anything a little bit of noticeable increase here along this segment of the san andreas fault that's the creeper or, or it's the creeping section i like to call it the creeper section but uh, that area seen a little bit of microquakes in a, li a little linear fashion up and down that segment uh, southern california not a whole lot popping down there things kind of on the minimal scale today uh, a couple small earthquakes last night around the uh, Salton Sea area. That's at the southern end of the uh, uh, San Andreas Fault off the Brawley Seismic Zone. Uh, but aside from that, things just kind of on the minimal side there along the west coast. Up here outside of Seattle, a couple earthquakes. They're pretty deep as well. Uh, some of them stretching down about 33.6 kilometers for a 2.0 in the Olympic Peninsula, Washington region. That's a pretty deep earthquake. I'm kind of wondering if we may be seeing some tremor activity up here tonight uh, on the map once it does come out. The tremor activity from last night was pretty uh, pretty large. 376, 376 epicenters of tremor. Now, these are not earthquakes and by any means, but basically a vibrational signal being picked up by very sensitive equipment here. Um, like I say, an earthquake is going to be a sudden release or a jolt you know kind of like a sudden movement this here is more or less like a just a slow rub of the vibrate of the uh, plates here uh, and in this case it's going to be the north american plate you got the juan de fuca plate here offshore better known as the cascadia right kind of shoving that whole plate system underneath the north american plate uh slowly but also at the same time building up pressure and trimmers inland down dip uh, I say inland, but it's actually down dip as you go more inland on the map, the deeper they become. And of course, the locked area offshore runs from Northern Cal all the way up to BC region uh, or the uh, Vancouver Island ranges area. So uh, yeah, Northern California definitely showing quite a bit of tremor yesterday. We didn't see too much in terms of earthquake activity though. A lot of times when we get that uh, vibrational frequencies there, the tremors, we start noticing a, a lot more stress and cracking of the of the features to the west upstream. But uh, so far, we're not really seeing anything. Doesn't mean that we haven't had any. Uh, they're just not reporting it there on the map. Uh, Alaska, about the same up there. Beautiful day in Alaska, I'm sure. No major swarms to report. And uh, the big island of Hawaii doing its thing out there. Most of the earthquake activity around the Pahala region. No adjustments um, to any of the volcanoes currently. The earthquake activity in the Tau volcano region, right? Let me bring up this uh, map here. The volcano hazards. They added the two earthquakes down, or the uh, two volcanoes down there in the American Samoa to the yellow advisory category. Uh, these two volcanoes. Let me zoom in here and kind of show you guys what's going on. My mouse wheel's not, or my mouse wheel. <laughs> The wheel on my mouse isn't working. Um, so here's here's the Tau volcano, and you got another volcano over here, a submarine volcano within the islands here, the American Samoa. Uh, activity here at the volcanoes are uh, still continuing. Now, this is the latest data um, from the last 24 hours or so, and it is current. I'm having some issues with the Tau volcano um, the seismograph station so I headed uh, head over to the other this little other volcano station monitoring station here and it's picking up the data quite nicely as well um, seen a couple earthquakes probably in the two range uh, throughout the day today and also quite a few other smaller microquakes uh, that are continuing and this has just been an ongoing event now for a couple weeks and uh, what it's leading to who knows uh, all I know is it's definitely uh, kind of a big deal. Uh, it could be volcanic. It, well, obviously, it is volcanic. But how big of a how big of a uh, of a mess is it going to make? We'll have to see how this plays out. Um, the latest update. Let's see what we got here. This was put out. Uh, looks like earlier today. This is UTC time, so this was late last night when it was put out. Uh, earthquake swarm is occurring in the Manua Islands of the American Samoa as the federal entity responsible for monitoring earthquakes. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Um, no major changes, though. 
See, here's where it talks about closer to the uh, Tau volcano ra rather than the other one that I pulled up there. Uh, approximately 20 earthquakes per hour have been recorded for the past several days. So 20 earthquakes per hour, right? So that's a lot. Um, and uh, it's, you know, it's, uh, it's unclear. It's uncertain on what will become of all this stuff. I think uh, it's definitely worth monitoring. I know they have installed some, uh, uh, some sound sensors and, or they're going to because um, people have been hearing kind of like booms as well, you know, something going on underneath the ground, and that could be bad news. Um, but they're installing some sound sensors and also some further uh, webby quarters and whatnot throughout the region. But uh, they tend to think that these, uh, um, if it does erupt, uh, it's going to be similar to what we see in uh, Hawaii, the big island over the hot spot there, kind of just like slow, low-level localized explosions of lava, lava flows, and, uh, of course, earthquakes and whatnot. I don't think they're calling for anything, you know, blasting, you know, like a major blast uh, from uh, from this volcano. But still, we don't know what's bubbling underneath there or what's brewing. So definitely we need to keep an eye on that pretty closely. Again, down there in the Tall Volcano, the Manua Islands area of the American Samoa. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Yellowstone National Park. I don't believe we have anything cooking out there in the uh, beautiful state of Wyoming. Looks calm, clear. No earthquakes that I can tell here. Maybe a couple small little microquakes uh, throughout the last 24 hours, but very, very, very small. All right, solar weather activity. We'll go ahead and check this out here as we jump over to a website. These guys here calling for red across the board. I think somebody kind of messed up here um, on the colors. They should not be, uh, it shouldn't be like that. Because um, the percentages, if you look at the percentages, they have dropped down to 40, 25%. So someone here at this website forgot to change uh, the correct um, G1 status up here. should be um, not red. Right now, current conditions uh, up around the 3 index. KP index, that is. A little bit of roars forming up there around the higher latitudes. Looks like Iceland, Greenland area. Portions of Canada, all those lucky guys getting in on some uh, beautiful aurora displays, I'm sure, a little bit later tonight. Uh, the chances aren't super high, but at least they have a, a more likelihood than what we do here in the States, that's for sure. Uh, no major adjustments or uh, any type of incoming CMEs that I can note uh, throughout the uh, current space weather activity. Things kind of dwindling, if you will, on uh, all the graphs right now. The flare threat or declining flare threat is just a bummer i'm telling you it's just a complete bummer uh we got a lot of sunspots so far we're ahead of the uh predicted sunspots for the cycle but uh they're wimpy <laughs> that's the word i can think of they're just wimpy i don't want to see a bunch of sunspots i want to see some cool massive solar flares and earth directed I don't know about you, but I get excited when I think about stuff like that. I don't want green across the board. I don't want fair weather conditions. I like activity, folks. This world's too boring. It needs to be active, right? Let's make it active. All right. Uh, let's see coronal hole activity. I'm okay. I'm okay. Um, a little coronal hole activity. It looks like this map's a little bit older. It looks like this is from actually yesterday. Yeah, so we're about a day behind here on the map from the uh, Solar Ham site. Uh, let's see what we got. See if this one's more active or more recent. Yeah, see this one's here. It's just right now. Uh, the coronal hole activity has scooted off the map or at least further away from the Earth view. And the sunspots, as numerous numerous are, as they are, there's not a whole lot of complex um, areas that we could expect a large flare to possibly pop off from. In fact, it uh, looks like 55% chance of a C flare. M flare has dropped to a 10% chance X flare and all the other cool stuff is down less than one one percent so things are uh dwindling down in that uh respect of sunspots and around the bend folks it looks pretty clear there's a couple of sunspot developments here um but man they they don't look all that active at all so you know it's it's one of those things that uh just kind of have to sit and wait and see what happens um, but again, these sunspots, they can blast up out of the blue or out of the yellow in this case. Um, 
yeah all right guys we'll be back a little bit later on this evening i think we'll do a question and answer show we haven't done that in quite a while uh there's a 4.2 over there it looks like uh where was that let's see exactly where that was at i'm not for sh not for certain where that was at 4.2 in northern italy that was uh when was that looks like earlier this morning uh, I'm really surprised the USGS didn't show that. And then again, maybe I'm not surprised. So it is what it is. But at least it's showing up here on the EMSC model, folks. The globe, uh, the Earthquake 3D globe, consists of the USGS and the EMSC model. See, look at that. That was really weird why it's doing that. Really strange, folks. I've been noticing some weird stuff going on with my electronics recently. See that? Not for sure why. But uh, we'll figure it out. All right, guys. We'll chat at you in a little bit. Have a good night. We'll chat you actually later tonight.